Uh, good evening. I um, just going to do a very, honestly, a very brief video. I um, my last video, I I was um, using this this um, wood body joint airplane, and I had mentioned in the video, the, the video, the the whole the whole concept of video of the video, so to speak, was um, are are these viable? If you if you use planes, hand planes, to woodwork to prepare your stock, or or even if you're not preparing stock, just using it to trim up edges and and you know flatten surfaces and whatnot. Um, one of my last videos, I I did a video on a number seven Stanley joiner, which I I think is a very very useful tool. But looking at prices on the internet i found that they were expensive so i i might i i mentioned the the um the viability of using a wood body joiner like this one here because they're generally less money by about half from what i'm finding and they still work great but they do require some they do they do require a level of maintenance that um some a new woodworker may not be up to as of yet but in the video i i had mentioned about flattening them flattening these planes and, and keeping the the sole as true as you can keep it now I, I'll, I'll say this again in general you don't need a, 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 the 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 sole of a plane be it metal or wood does not need to be a a ridiculous level of flatness that is not how planes work. They, the, the, the main issue with any plane is it can't be twisted, Me, meaning you, you can't have a, if, that, if you can imagine that being the plane body, you can't have stew going one way or the other because the, 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 generally what will happen is the iron, will, a lot of times it won't take, you'll never get it to take even shavings or maybe it would only take heavy shavings. It, it could be a, a couple different things. And I had mentioned that I, I this plane, I flattened it when I got it, which was, I'm, I'm not sure how long ago now. It was, um, it was given to me. So I, 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 I'm really usually pretty good at remembering when I bought tools, but when people give them to me, it's a whole other matter because they usually give them to you in clumps. Um, but what I did last night was I decided to, to, to flatten, to give this a drawing up. And I noticed, what I noticed was when I had it on, a, now my bench is not perfectly flat either. When I had it on the bench, it would rock. If I pushed on the back corner, the plane would rock. And, and it actually still does a tad, but it's, it's not bad. The, the, there is no twist on the plane. There is a minor high point right there. There's a check there. And I noticed that it's kind of funny. I flattened, I flattened this corner and last night I applied linseed oil and now it's swelled up again. So, um, but it's not going to affect the, the usefulness of the plane because the rest of the plane is nice and flat. It's hard to see when you use a camera here, you did that like fish lens effect, but I don't know if, let's try this. The main, the main areas you want here, you want, you want your, you want your plane to be nice and flat in this area behind and in front of the mouth. There, oh, I'm sorry, behind and in front of my mouth. And there, I have a nice, a, a really nice, I'm trying to sight this down, it's not the easiest thing, but it is, it is in pretty good shape. Now I haven't used it yet, so I could be dead wrong, because I, what I did last night was I, I coated it and I, I put a coat of linseed oil on it I let it dry out, wiped it down, and then at a last night, maybe right before midnight, I added one more coat. 
And I, so I, I wanted to let that really dry before I used it. Right now it's about, me. it's a little bit after 6, 6.30 here. So I, I really, I, I, haven't even, I haven't even waxed it yet, which I will do later. Um, speaking of which, I, I don't know if I mentioned this before. I'm, I'm, before I do anything else, I say I'm not a shill. Nobody pays me to do this. Um, I don't get any compensation whatsoever for this. The, the owner of this company doesn't has no idea that I'm doing this, but what I use generally use for my wood body planes is this product called Alfie Shine. It's a, it's a, it's a basically a it's a hard wax. It's all natural. It smell it's 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 funny. It smells incredible. It's it's the the ingredients are um, beeswax, carnauba wax. Frankincense and myrrh and olive oil, cinnamon oil and clove oil. It, it has a really pleasant smell to it. It, it. it reminds me of a of a combination of like soap and like you know honey, hun, like a honey soap and aftershave. If that if you didn't imagine that, but it, it's a really it, I, I really like what it does. It, it adds a um, nice protective coating, and it. Um, it it's it really does make a difference, not only in in um what you how how the plane works, but but how it looks. It, it, it it's it's really a nice product. I, I, they sell it on Amazon. Um, a, a two ounce tin is uh, I think about fifteen dollars, and I've had this for several years, and so two ounces really goes a long way. And and just for anybody out there who's considering this product, you apply it just like you would apply any wax. Um, buff it off, it, let, let it let it you know, set up for a few minutes. Buff it off, then wait a couple days and apply. I I always put two coats on, so I, I wait two days and apply a second coat. The other thing I did once again is something you probably won't notice because I didn't really focus on it. The mouth of a plane was kind of jagged. So I took my square, I stored, or, or um, I um, not stored, I just used a pencil to define a, a nice line, a nice um, perpendicular line. And I cleaned it up with a, a nice sharp stew chisel. And that, that, that it probably is not going to affect the functionality of the plane all that much, but it does look a lot more it was kind of getting pretty beat up, so this does look a lot better. But yeah, I, I what really changed my mind? I'm gonna to try to. I, I found this old board. I it's, it's an old piece of construction lumber. I think it's it's sort of stewed, which is actually good. But I I used it to make the I used I made a few dowels for my the handles of my of my bench vise. And this was the leftover piece. That's a nice straight green, which is why I see that. But yeah, the weather around here, I, I mentioned before, is kind of crazy, which is what makes wooden, wooden planes a little bit more difficult to use. And not, not to use, but to, to maintain. Like um, yesterday morning, or, or yesterday for most of the day, it was below freezing. And it was, it was in, the, in the low 20s to, to right around 30 degrees. Um, I, I don't, I'm not great with Celsius in case anybody watching doesn't use Fahrenheit. I, low twenties, I guess is at like minus five or something like that. You don't forgive me if I'm wrong. I'm, as I said, I'm not very good with it. And now it's 50 degrees out and it's been raining all day. Or it's close to 50 at least. And once again, forgive me. I don't know what that is in Celsius. Is it like maybe nine or 10? I I have to, I should get a chart, but because it, it's something I should know. So I'm going to try this and see how it works. This is the first time I've been using it since, since I, I flattened it. So it might need a little bit of adjustment. Well, that's pretty good. It's a little heavy on the one side. I don't know if that could be because this board is skewed. I'm gonna try to bat that off a touch. 
what I need to do is make, make a, a little hanger for my plane hanger or, or my plane hammer here that I use. I use that on, on both wood planes and metal body planes, wood body and metal body. That's taking a little bit of a. Well, that's actually a good sign though. It's taking a thin. I backed the iron off. I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to get this flat. Get the stew out. But I backed off the iron, and I'm taking a a thin shaving now, which is a good sign because if 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 the plane if I had messed up flattening it, I in all likelihood would not be able to make adjustments like that. Man, this is really badly skewed. I think I might have. I think what I did with this was cut it on a table saw and sort of um, remove some of the remove some of the, the material with the saw blade so I could make a dowel a little bit easier. It's definitely flattening it up, but I'll try to I'm gonna back this up a touch more and see what happens, see how fine I can get it. That's not, not that you would really want your smooth plane to be able to, or your, your, your um, joiner plane to be able to give you shavings like this. But that's really, really thin. I, I do have calibers here somewhere, but that is smooth plane thin. So once again, that's a good indicator that This plane is functioning better than it's functioning well. And then there. Still a touch you. Yeah, that's, it's, I'm getting uneven shavings on purpose. I'm trying to flatten that stew out to see it's still a touch stew. Much better than it was. Nice and smooth too, actually. Should make another dowel with that. Um, anyway, the point being that, yeah, the, these are, sorry, these are good planes to to have around, especially if you can find one that is in restorable condition. The, um, the downside, like I said in the video the other day, is that if they are in rough shape, a new woodworker probably is not going to have the, the, um, the experience, I don't want to say ability, that's not the right word, the experience to to get it up and running it took me a few years of trial and error to to the point where I, I felt that I can get a plane a wood plane like this restored to an acceptable level now and of course there are people who are really really good and I mean they're professional level woodworkers restorers who, um, you know, they, they can get tools like this, even when, even when they're not in the best shape and they can really get them tuned up and, and, and running great again. But even then, like I've seen, I've seen videos where, like right here, we're at the point now where the mouth of this plane is, is a hair too wide. I, I'd say, this is just my own opinion. Somebody would probably tell me otherwise, but 
I would say that you'd probably want to have that about a quarter inch tighter for, for a joiner. But I'm sure this plane has been flattened um, more, more than a few times in its life. So it, it, it um, still works. It will still function as a joiner just fine. It, it's just, it, it probably is not going to, if, if, I, if I sharp, if I, I mean, if I f flatten this thing a few more times, it would probably need to, I would probably need to do something like route out this area here and and put a mouth closer in or something like that which I've never actually done that before on on I did it on a transition transitional smoother one time and it, it was it worked okay but the, the transitional smoother itself never worked all that great you know I'm not a fan of those planes in the least there's people that love them and once again I'm sure there's people out there who are you know they're 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 professional woodworkers slash restorers. They they can take those planes and get them functioning. I I never could get every every one I've ever come across had an issue with with the lever cap and the adjustment. Every single one of them I've ever seen. And that should just be bad luck on my part. But I could I just I've never found one that I really liked. So, but this yeah these these are good tools if you find if you can get your hands on them. And another, another tip I have, and this, this isn't just for restorers, it's for anybody really. When I, I last night, for example, I, I mentioned that I, I had applied the second coat of linseed oil. And what I did, what I did before, I, I always, I'm sure you've all heard and you don't let linseed oil cure in a rag, especially when you have a bunch of rags bunched together. Because when, when linseed oil cures, it generates heat. And you get enough rags together, you can actually start a fire, a spontaneous fire. So what I did was, I, got, I had a small rag like this. I wiped, the, put the second coat on, on, the, on the sole of the plane. And before, before I put the iron away, I wiped it with the linseed oil as well. It's a it's a really good linseed oil is a really good metal cleaner, and you you'd be really surprised at the amount of of junk for lack of a better word that will come off a a um, plain iron from just from sharpening and, and collecting dust and everything. But when I when I did that, I I wiped it off. I don't. Unlike a metal body plane, I don't oil the irons on these. I don't want uh, th th this. This is just my own um, guess, but I don't want oil getting on the the frog, or the, if you want to call it the frog of of the um, of a wood body plane and swelling it up. But I wiped it down, and I got. Let let it let it sit for a minute and then wiped it off clean before I before I put it. I, I actually just put the iron back in the plane right before I started filming, so it's it's not as if I put it in last night. But it, it to to me it's a good idea. Or unlike unlike a um, a metal plane like my Stanley over here, in a wood body plane that you want a little bit more friction. On the, so as I, I hate to stop, keep stopping myself. Some of you probably say, "Oh no, yeah, you're wrong, Bill." I, you, I want a little bit more friction between the iron and and the frog on a board body plane because I want the wedge, I want the wedge, I want to know that this wedge is seated and the iron is nice and seated as well. I don't want that iron sliding all over the place. I think one of the issues with this plane here, which this this um, spell plane I have, is the is the the frog of of, of the, the, the this great you want that nice and waxed and smooth, but I believe the frog in here is waxed. It definitely has some type of finish on it, which you know, I, I suppose you want to 
you want to seal up your a, a tool like that before you before you sell it but it does make that wedge just does not want to bite down no matter how hard I push down on it it won't sit it gets to the point where it's actually sliding into the in, into the, the so past the sole of the plane but anyway I'm flying off on a tangent here and I also what I did too with with the linseed oil is I I wiped off the, the, the any of the dirt on you know, that's cleaned up the wedge and all that not the back of it though that's the front I cleaned up the, the front of the wedge and the back of the wedge I just wiped down with a dry cloth just little little things like that will help help in, in my experience they will help these planes function better but I still am a bit torn about this one tiny little high spot at the back of the plane. It just it's it's bugs me a little bit that it's there. But the plane is functioning really well, so I don't think I will mess with it right now. I'm I'm going to put a coat of wax on this and let it set, and then I'll add another coat um, before the weekend. So once again, I, I hope that this video helps if you're in the market for a joiner plane, if, if you're not necessarily convinced on, on using a power joiner, which is, I have nothing against power tools at all. I say, I say this a hundred times. I actually like power tools. Um, wood joiners, I don't like. I... I um, the, the, put it this way, I don't like the wood joiner, power joiners. I hate, I, I, sorry, I had a long day today. I, I, I don't like power joiners, you know, power joiner planers, if you want to call them that. That makes it more clear. I don't like the sizes that the typical homeowner, the typical home wood shop can, has a space for, or the typical home woodworker can afford. In, in my opinion, my amateur opinion, they're too small and they are, they, they are, in, unless you, you know, maybe you have the means, you, you have a, have the space and the money to buy a nice larger scale one, but I could probably only afford a bench top. And to me, I've used those before and they're, they are, I believe they're dangerous. And I say that as, as a person who has worked around you know, heavy, heavy machinery, you know, large industrial printing presses, industrial transformers, electrical transformers, you, you, you any small to mid-sized piece of power tool and electrical equipment, I've used it. I've used it all and, and I find joiners very dangerous. I don't like them one bit, small ones, not, not, not the big, the big ones that you'll see at a, at a commercial shop. But the the, the the bench top joiners they they I don't know what what you would want to use a, a, a joiner that small for any the boards that you can join on it you can just as easily joint with a plane a hand plane and it's much safer and and it's uh, you know hand hand planes are messy don't get me wrong but joiners are messier same thing with routers that's one I, I think a, a Electric routers are great tools, but I never use one in, in, in the capacity to make furniture because of the mess. It's just, just the, the noise and the mess really is just so loud. I, I will only use one of those outside. But um, once again, I'm going off on a tangent here. So I, I, I really hope that this video helps. And um, I hope that you, if, if you're in the market for a wood body joiner that this video helped you maybe it's may, maybe made the decision a little bit easier and maybe it helped you avoid there, there are certain tools you want to avoid as I said and maybe maybe it will help you do that and as always there's some really good videos out there by pro woodworkers um, Paul Sellers in particular I, I hate the name drop because I don't know Paul Sellers from Adam but he has a couple really good videos on restoring planes like this that I think are well worth watching if, if you're going that route.
So I uh, hope you guys have a great night, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.